Hey everyone, welcome to our live session on the Untold Red, Red Secrets where we'll be talking about sustainable menstruation. Uh, before we get into the topic, um, let us give you a brief background, especially folks who are just uh, joining us or who are just um, going live with us for the first time. Uh, so we started this permaculture project uh, four years ago where we are trying to uh, revive a rainforest uh, on a dump yard and uh, we are trying to revive a river that was dead. So this entire project is um, created and uh, nurtured by the volunteers who have kind of come here and given their sweat and blood over the years from different corners of the world. And during this lockdown, some of us who are like uh, in the forest, we were trying to share our experience and our learning of uh, managing waste for our community and uh, uh, how we've imbibed the zero waste principle and uh, the certain things that we've sh uh, we'd like to share with everyone and uh, we're calling it secrets because unfortunately it's not discussed as uh, often as it should be in uh, the mainstream so we have our team here jamming up as always so while we are at it uh, let me just uh, also talk about this uh, particular thing that you'll see often in the forest it's called a lichen and it's an indicator of the uh, quality of oxygen in the air so if you see the trees not having any of these lichen in the bark that usually is sort of like a sign that there is a lot of pollution around and uh, it's also the fact that when you come and smell a lichen it kind of lifts up your spirit and uh, So that's Vishal on the guitar, that's Abhishek there, Ankita and Saurav. As usual, he is behind the camera. <laughs> As usual, um, we begin the session by um, bringing you a little skit uh, that tries to uh, mimic what happens in real life and um, also that brings in a little fun element. All right, so let's go and see inside what Ankita and Abhishek are up to this time. But you know what? I won't be able to do puja today. Why? Uh, it is you know that time of the month. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Oh, what is this? No, why? What is this plastic? Oh wait, no, don't, 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 plastic don't here. touch it. Uh, I have kept my used sanitary pads there. Maybe you know I will uh, uh, burn it later. Maybe. <laughs> Ankita, but you only told me from last two weeks you have been told, telling me uh, to compost, to don't mm. throw plastic waste to. Uh, make it like plastic break but now you're telling to burn this plastic and you know plastic like burning plastic makes so much of waste like so much of pollution so okay so what I'm going to do I'm going to put it inside the biomedical waste that's a good idea
see, as you must have seen, um, that's what ideally should happen in every household where your sanitary waste should go into a separate container that has um, the biomedical waste. But uh, what happens after that? Does it, is it really taken care of on its own or not? So usually you'll see packages wrapped in black plastic that denotes something uh, secretive, something sinister. And then uh, usually what happens is these bins are collected by the waste pickers and uh, they If it's an efficient system, they will segregate it and keep it. But usually it goes from your home and gets dumped into the waste that is mixed. So you have your plastic waste here, you have your organic waste, and basically everything that is generally coming out from uh, people's home. So now what happens? So this whole thing, has to be taken care of by someone, right? So, like we discussed in our previous two sessions, um, where we discussed about composting and we discussed about the dirty secrets of plastic, um, waste is, there is no such thing as a way when it comes to waste. So waste is usually and literally handled by someone. So you'll have someone going into your waste and, um, picking it up with your hand and then segregating it again or trying to he would probably either take it to a landfill or he would try to burn it if there is an incinerator around but someone still handles your sanitary waste once it goes out from your place right so this whole thing about sustainable menstruation has a so this whole thing about sustainable menstruation has um, two aspects of it, two big aspects. One is um, human's health and uh, the second is the environmental health. Now in case of human's health, I think you can divide it further into two more aspects. You can talk about the mental health and the uh, physical health. So uh, today we'll try and cover both and uh, we have uh, our friends uh, Nidarshana, who goes by the Instagram handle as the Sustainable Indian, and Kamna, who goes by uh, her Instagram handle as My Cocktail Life, they would be joining us, sharing us their insight of their zero waste journey, of their uh, journey towards uh, leaving a more sustainable life, um, and uh, they will be in conversation with um, Ankita, and uh, uh, we'll try and smash some of the taboo that is there around. Uh, menstruation and uh, in fact this is one where you often would not see a man talking about menstruation so that's the first step that we've taken uh, we we want uh, men to also be talking about it so that uh, some of these um, prejudices that is there some of the taboo that is there is dispelled and uh, also the fact that we need more people to be talking about it from both sexes because the aspect of environmental health is mostly subdued whenever someone talks about uh, menstruation because it's usually um, and if you look at it the reason why it's sub subdued is because most of the marketing that you see most of the public um, mainstream media is occupied by the pad making companies and uh, they would in a bit to try and promote their product downplay the environmental hazard of so, uh, the some of the options that you have right so let's go inside let's uh, have a little chat with uh, Ankita hey Ankita So, um, how does it feel to talk about sustainable menstruation? Uh, first of all, uh, this is uh, one topic which usually no one talks about. 
like all women they are uh, somewhere ashamed or there is uh, you know something some vulnerability att- attached to it that when this topic comes up uh, they become shy suddenly hmm. but i take it as a privilege that i get to talk about this and there are two more women will will be joining mm-hmm. us yeah. so it's a, i think it's a great uh, it feels great, great. awesome uh so um we'll take um kamna um on board so if you uh, just a short introduction about kamna um she is um someone who is living in hyderabad with a family and uh, she is really inspiring with um, all the initiatives that she is taken to live a sustainable life in the city and she is raising two wonderful boys with uh, the virtues of regenerative living imbibed in them right so uh, we'll take kamna on board and also talk to her as to what has been her journey towards uh, sustainability so you know what utsav mm-hmm. is just before uh, kamna joins i will just show what the one packet of uh, so when you pull out one sanitary napkin out of the packet it has this outer nice looking uh, layer when you rip it apart you have we have kamna oh right. you have yeah. kamna already hi kamna hi kamna uh, she's just loading so yeah. she'll be there in the like, sure sure yeah. sure so you see there is one more um, paper coated with plastic inside and you open the wings and there is this outer thin perforating layer mm-hmm. which uh, for the acquisition of liquid and then out thin layer yeah. and inside uh, there is this uh, super absorbent polymer which helps to you know uh, actually hold the liquid inside because when it catches the liquid it converts it into gel like substance okay. and uh, to mention about it has also antibacterial and uh, deodorant agent which add more harm to the soil mm-hmm. because of all the organochlorines mm-hmm. which it has mm-hmm. kamna has joined yeah okay kamna has joined so can we have a look at her once <laughs> um yeah hi kamna hi hey, kamna how are you I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for joining the session. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for inviting. We are we are glad to have you here. Uh, you know what, Kamal? Yeah. Uh, Kamal, you have been <laughs> you have been uh, living a sustainable lifestyle yourself for so many years. Yes. Uh, but when it comes to menstruation, what exactly your sustainable menstruation? Uh, I'm sorry. Can you repeat your question? what exactly is the thing yeah i i want to ask uh, can you hear me yeah Hello. yeah okay. so Hello? Uh, you, yeah. you have been living a uh, you know a sustainable lifestyle yourself with zero waste and all the you know wonderful things that you do but when it comes to menstruation what is sustainable menstruation what is a sustainable menstruation sustainable menstruation is that some what is the meaning of sustainable sustainable means that you are able to sustain it and uh, it should not be you know uh, in terms of friendliness uh, a product should not be you know sustainable to the environment only it should be friendly to your body so for me sustainable menstrual product means that uh, the product that i'm using uh, you know it should not be affecting the environment damaging mm-hmm. the environment and along with it it should be friendly towards my body as well wow yeah that but then do we have a wide range of products in that case uh so honestly yes from past uh, so i started sustainable products uh once i got pregnant with my first child so 5 years back i got to know about the products the sustainable products but when i started learning about it i realized that when i got my periods first my mother gave me the piece of cloth so it was not the disposable sanitary napkin that was given to me so that was a sustainable option that was offered to me by my mother 
but I never realized that it is sustainable, how it is good for my body, how it is good for the environment. I had no idea about the same because I was, you know, uh, handling my own issues with my body. Uh, the menstrual topic was new to me. I was exploring my reproductive organs, the system, how it all happens. So it was very confusing. So from the sustainability angle, I never realized that what practices my mother has used in her menstruation time or the option that they, she gave me was actually sustainable. It is like later on, you know, we explored the option of disposable napkins. And apparently we thought that it is very convenient to use. Um, but again, like Utsav mentioned that so many corporations are behind, you know, uh, ingraining the minds of people that uh, sanitary, disposable sanitary napkins are the best option for women. So uh, they're producing sanitary napkins. So, yeah. yeah, sorry. I just, I just saw how many layers of plastic it comes along. Yeah, so, so yeah, that's what. So one, uh, I, I, in fact, I always keep one disposable napkin with me. So this is like six years old. And uh, so whenever I have to teach people or, you know, talk about it, I always show them, please, how many layers, like you were mentioning, like how many layers of plastic is there in it? And apparently I learned that there are 50 plastic bags in one sanitary napkin. 50 oh plastic God. bags. That's quite a lot. Okay. Yes. Yeah. But uh, I mean, it's... it's, it's uh, like, yeah, I mean, yeah, that, that's true. Uh, lately, I have been, um, you know, reading about uh, the reusable cloth pads. And I yes. thought, like, you know, I might give it a try. So I went to the YouTube yeah. to see the procedure if yeah. I could make it at home. Uh, and after right. I saw a video about uh, how you make the sanitary pad yourself with the piece of cloth, uh, I just happened right. to scroll down the comments below. And I was amazed to see uh, that people were talking that this is one of the most unhygienic uh, methods. And we must move and use uh, sanitary pads instead. So, uh, like, have you, what is your take on it? So, so we are when we talk about menstruation, so there are two uh, areas. One area is the stigma and the shame that is attached with the menstruation. And one area is, of course, the sustainability and the environmental factor and the uh, economic cost. Uh, so when you are talking about, uh, you know, disposables are more better option and the cloths are unhygienic. Has anybody considered that why cloths are unhygienic? Because apparently, if we go back in the history, women were using cloth only. So why suddenly, you know, this whole unhygienic factor is being attached with the cloth, with the re reusable option? It's all because of the stigma and the shame that is attached with the menstruation. Uh, we have been, uh, from the right from the beginning, we have been conditioned in a way that periods are bad. It is, it is unhygienic and we should not be uh, talk about it. It's a taboo topic. Uh, so what happened was because of all this shame and conditioning, uh, the women were not able to, you know, clean the cloth properly. They were not able to dry the cloth properly under the sun. Now, sun is the biggest antibacterial agent. It is the biggest sanitizer. And if we are not, you know, sanitizing the same piece of cloth under the sun and we are putting it under the bed or in the shady area, mm -hmm. of course, it's going to get unhygienic. And that's how it started gaining this bad reputation of, of being unhygienic. Yeah, so washing it properly and drying it off well is one of the way you can. Yeah. Uh, when the cloth is like when when you know it gets spoiled with your blood. Uh, so first of all, the men's when you talk about menstrual blood, so it's actually men's, menstrual fluid. Uh, it has blood is one of the main components of it. That's why we think it's a blood. But there is vaginal secretion, there is mucus, and then there is the lining which actually tears off and that's why the blood comes. So there are many components of the uh, menstrual fluid and we think that it's only blood. No, it's not blood, yeah. it's a fluid. So, so yeah, so once so the, the, the clock can be during the phase of menstruation, right? I'm sorry? It is just one of the phase during the menstrual cycle when it is a secretive phase and you are just, uh, so it's not at all dirty or anything. No, 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 absolutely. It's not that you see, I do have the model as well. So I bought it so that I can talk to me, uh, talk my kids about the same. And sometimes I conduct workshops as well. So this is like a typical uterus model. So this is your fallopian tubes. This is your ovary. Um, this is where the endometrial lining is, which gets steered. And when it shifts, the blood, you know, comes out. 
So this is your vagina and this is the vaginal cavity. So that's how the blood comes up. It is absolutely it is like a biological process that happens every month, and that's how you know we get. If it doesn't shed, that means we are pregnant. It's as simple. So I don't know why it's becoming so unhygienic. It is one of the way of cleaning your body. In fact, if you don't uh, change your sanitary napkins or so uh, properly, like three to four times in a day, it still becomes unhygienic. Oh. Right. So the same goes right. for. Apparently, yeah. So you ha- you're supposed to change your uh, napkins. Be it be disposable, be it be reusable. You're supposed to change it every four hours. So on an average. Per period cycles, like uh, if your period cycle is for like three days, so approximately you should be using eight sanitary napkins on an average. Wow. <laughs> so now talk about the cost factor. If, for example, if you're using eight sanitary napkins per cycle, um, if I calculate the cost, uh, on an average, the woman goes through four twenty period cycle in her lifespan. Mm-hmm. Okay, so when the period starts uh, in between the age of ten years to fifteen years, and it lasts from forty-five years to fifty years, right? Okay. So on average, it comes up to be four twenty cycles. So for four twenty, yeah. so per cycle, you'll be using eight sanitary napkins. For example, it's for example, if it's disposable, so you are actually spending around ten thousand to forty-five thousand rupees uh, in ten years. Wow. Whereas if it's if it's a cloth pad. You are spending only like five thousand rupees in ten years, and the cost gets reduced if you are making them at home. Right. So you yeah. know, I think if we are consumed with the uh, this idea of you know consumerism, where uh, we go for uh, easily uh, available, most comfortable options, and we totally give a blind eye towards the cost and the hazards which it is going to cause to the environment. So I think uh, looking at the statistics of one of the, one of the major reason that why people think that uh, you know using a disposable is is actually more easier is also because in our country we have the lack of access of disposing that sanitary napkin. So the yeah. accessibility towards the disposing of the sanitary napkin, how to dispose a sanitary napkin, is again a very big task. So to avoid that, so people are using more and more uh, disposable napkins, but they don't know how to dispose them properly. There is lack of waste segregation. So, yeah, it, it's too problematic. So like, you know, 32 millions of uh, sanitary napkins are produced every year, and most of them they are either incinerated, which leads to the formation of a uh, lot of toxic gases. Uh, some yeah, of them are just lying on the landfill. And so as per the solid, so as per the solid solid waste management, so the bi, so uh, your sanitary napkins comes under the biomedical uh, mm-hmm. under the biomedical genre. Now, if according to the Biomedical Waste Management Act 2016, uh, all the biomedical waste should be incinerated. It should be autoclave to kill the pathogens or any harmful bacteria inside. Now. If the incinerator is not able to provide the optimum temperature, which is like 800 degrees, which is required to burn and to avoid the emissions, which are like carcinogenic, uh, but that kind of infrastructure is not available in our country. Uh, we cannot install incinerators in every locality because <coughs> then it also requires the option of, uh, you know, picking up the sanitary napkin from every house, making sure that they are segregated properly, then taking them to the warehouse where the incinerator is placed. In incinerator has to be in a location where it's properly ventilated. It you have to make sure that there are <coughs> less emission. So <coughs> there are too many factors involved, and so much of energy consumption that goes into incinerator. So I don't know if incinerator is the best option. So I think the best way is to use the uh, products which are eco-friendly. <coughs> that you can at least cut off the. Uh, like, of course. Has this very good analogy of the bathtub. So yeah, it is something that right uh, when you're giving the example of uh, uh, incinerator, I think uh, what it reminds me is of this analogy where let's say you have a bathtub, okay, where it's full of water and uh, you want to kind of uh, drain out the bathtub. Usually, what we end up doing is uh, we take a mug and then we are trying to empty the bathtub without really turning off the tap. 
and uh, that's right. something that i think uh, we need to understand that we will always be pushed towards opting for more and more technical solutions with regards to incineration will always be pushed towards investing into more infrastructure to deal with waste but uh, i think right. this is where i think sustainability needs to come uh, to the forefront where mm-hmm. it need not be either or it need not be human health versus environmental health it can be both i think there is a big role of social conditioning and behavior modification as well so uh, it's not just um, putting up an infrastructure i think sustainability uh, goes well with the social conditioning so we have to create awareness about uh, reproductive organs how it all works you know uh, creating awareness making women making them aware of their body uh, i think that, and that starts from the beginning we have to start loving our body not shaming them not shaming our our uh, you know genitals uh, so it all starts from the beginning the conversation especially uh, like i am a mother of a daughter so i'm just preparing myself how am they do they know very well that their mother bleeds every month my son who is just 3 and 1/2 years old knows what is menstrual cup and amma bleeds every month Yeah. So it's all about you know conversation in the family, uh, making uh, you know I I make sure that my husband also is a part of this conversation so that kid gets start, uh, comfortable. Um, I got to know about periods from my friends, so I don't want that. I want my child to know about her body right from the beginning and not to feel uncomfortable about it or to talk about it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. when I was uh, got my periods, I used to use disposable napkins, and I used to wear them for like nine hours on a stretch. And especially when I used to go to school, I used to feel like I don't want to go to the washroom and change them. And somehow I never liked the idea of changing. So I used to push myself for nine hours or eight hours, and I realized that it. Now I realize that what was the reason of all those vaginal irritation and itchiness that was, you know, I was getting. It was all because of, uh, you know, I was not using the menstrual pad in a hygienic way, and nobody told me that you have to change them every three to four hours. So yeah. So as one of the last word before we get Nidarshana on board, what would you like to yeah. say to? Um, men like me who are curious about menstruation and uh, what would you like to tell all the men who are viewers on this live session um <laughs> i just want to say periods are part of anatomy it's a biological it's a physiological process we need to start respecting women we need to start giving uh you know uh, start talking about uh women's health we need to uh start um you know uh when if if giving them um i don't know how to frame this i think it's yeah, all starts with being more fun. open and talk about this topic i think because we have been talking exactly. about this for last 3 4 days and you know even uh, uh it is really amazing when men take part in the conversation <laughs> <laughs> There is actually a problem for me right now because there is a male who is sitting in this live session, and I'm talking to that person. So mm-hmm. it's also empowering for me. It also makes me more confident that men, like men, like also are taking, you know, interest in learning about menstruation, about women's body, about women's rights. So it's 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 quite. I mean, I get really happy to know all this. Uh, so before uh, we end, I uh, so I just wanted to show the pads that are available in yeah, the market. So these are the. <laughs> I'm sorry. They're so colorful and pretty looking. <laughs> I know they're so colorful. That's one of the pro of using cloth pads. So now these are easily available by many organizations who are working with. Uh, they are empowering other women. They are. They have a small setup. They are making these cloth pads, which are completely reusable. They are organic. So inside there are multiple layers of it, uh, and they are made of kora cotton. So they have a tick button. so you just have to tick it when you place it in, on your panties that's okay. it so one when you know when you're bleeding less hello yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah yeah uh, also i would like to say that one way to determine that you know uh, to determine the 
the size of the menstrual uh, pads is if you bleed very heavily you have to go for the large size extra large size and if you bleed you know uh, normally uh, the size of the pad should go from small to uh, medium to large so medium to large for the normal flow and extra large for the heavy flow and the width the width the length doesn't matter the width mm -hmm. of the cloth pad matters so okay. if your crotch area is slightly wider so you need mm -hmm. a wider pad if your crotch area is smaller so you need a smaller uh, you know lesser width uh, pads and the pants right and nowadays these uh, eco friendly reusable pads are available readily available in the market that itself is a yes. good thing in fact there are many there are many organizations who are working in the menstrual hygiene area they are conducting workshops in the rural setup in the village setups so they are coming i don't have that pad right now but i have seen it so it comes mm -hmm. in a shape of a square napkin you okay. so because there is a shame attached to the to the menstruation oh, oh, so what you they have come up no internet connection was uh, you getting message saying that you are breaking and uh, your internet connection uh, can you just check if it's live can is it okay it? now okay oh, let me just change the area uh, you are calm now is it okay yeah i think it should be yeah. is it okay yeah, i think so it should be good yeah, yeah. yeah so many uh, ngos are coming up with model like this so the pads are in a form of a square which you have to fold it now why the idea of square shape is because there is a shame attached to the menstruation so when women are washing they can just simply put the cloth outside and nobody will realize that it's a pad oh wow okay. yeah yeah so this is the piece of cloth but that 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 pad comes in the multiple layer in a form of a square shape so you just have to fold it make it into the layers and put it on your panty and if you're drying it on the out in the sun it looks like a napkin so nobody will know that it's a it's a sanitary pad right right that's amazing <laughs> yeah and one cloth up to actually goes up to 10 years if you're washing them properly make sure if you're washing them do not wash them in the hot water always wash them in the cold water you can put a few drop, drops of vinegar or the bioenzymes and that's it and make sure they are sun dried properly and that's it amazing wow this is something uh, we all must you know go for uh, use it right. i think using it and experiencing it and then deciding uh, Uh, of know, course, uh, it is the best way. Yeah, uh, just the last question. It is the learning curve. Uh, it just comes with it. Uh, it has yeah. a learning curve. Well, I said it just comes with it. Yeah, so we get a lot of questions about uh, what about teenagers? I mean, the, uh, girls who are menstruating for the first time. What would you advise to them? Uh, menstrual cups, uh, cloth pads. Uh, what is the? That I think that's now. That is that is going to happen. All right. Yeah. So, so I think we okay. might be waiting when so I would I would just like to say that if you are using I mean if you have not been comfortable using the reusable uh option for the menstruation which is very 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 important uh unlike disposable uh, sanitary napkins which is full of chemicals there are so many harmful chemicals actually that we don't even know and the laws state that because it's a biomedical product so they don't have to write all the ingredients that are present in the sanitary napkin so all the ingredients that goes inside the sanitary napkin is not listed on the pack i don't know how many carcinogenic mm -hmm. are going inside the body getting directly in touch there are so many chloroforms there are so many perfumes that are being added of course the plastic so uh, you just have to make uh, a very you know important because this is a very important decision of your life it's your body that you're talking about many women have suffered uti cancer because of the same reason and uh, and especially when when we talk about the disposable when we talk about the waste segregation make sure you know you're segregating it properly uh there's so much morality that we talk about when we look at our own pads we say yuck and disgusting and we just you know uh, put it in the bin and it's just vanished away somehow magically it doesn't vanish away it's in your landfill for 500 years in fact the disposable that i have used now oh, they're still lying in the landfill 
so it's it's i sometimes i just uh, you know go and go into this guilty trip that how many people would have touched my sanitary napkin that i have used and they're still lying in the landfill so yeah i mean Yeah. Thank you, yeah, Sandhya, for joining us. It was really, um, uh, we are really glad to have you here, and it was uh, very nice to talk to you as well. And keep inspiring us. Yeah, thank you. There is so much to talk about it. I think that we cannot cover this in fifteen minutes. Maybe we should have like a longer session about the same. <laughs> right. I think we will be having uh, Nidarshana uh, 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 sure. available to talk with us right now. Sure. So I'll just yeah. log out. Thank you so much. Thank you. Right. Thank Thanks you. Yeah. Bye. All right. So while we get um, Nidarshan on board, uh, let me just uh, put some facts and figures in place as to how um, uh, the numbers work out. So uh, it seems right now in India we have around uh, 300 and uh, around 355 uh, women mm-hmm. who are of the menstruating age right now. Uh, out of which 12% use sanitary pads okay okay and uh, which account for close to about uh, 7 billion um uh, sanitary pads that end up in the landfill oh my god and uh, hey nidarshana hi <laughs> hello guys wait i can't see yeah. her <laughs> hey nidarshana hi hey uto can you see you now Yes. Can you hear us? Yes, yes, loud and clear. Am I audible? Yes, yes. you are. So, Nidarshana, some time back uh, we were having a talk with Kamana, and uh, we were talking about uh, you know eco-friendly, uh, reusable cloth sanitary napkins, which we can make at home, get it at home, reuse it. Uh, so, in that case, uh, as we all are aware about the hazards of the sanitary napkins which are commercially available. So in that case, do we have uh, biodegradable sanitary napkins? Is it possible to get, or have you ever come across any? Uh, yes. So uh, Kamna has talked about. Okay, is it clear? Is my voice clear? Okay. Audible, not understandable. Um, is it clear now? Okay. So Kamna has spoken about. Uh, Is Rohit uh, okay. says yes. I'm audible. You guys can hear me clearly. Yeah, yeah we can. Um, okay. So there's one person who. Okay. So I think you're clear. Okay. Fine. Mostly clear. Uh. So yes. Uh. Uh. So biodegradable. I. I. I would just step. step a little back and talk a little bit bit about biodegradability so as uh, uh, as as you as you guys know i uh, i'm part of burton company and uh, 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 you know uh, for events we we basically do low waste events and uh, for events which are above say 200 300 people we recommend biodegradable products uh, biodegradable tableware to be used with a mandatory clause of composting to be done right so when we're talking about biodegradable pads okay in the same category um, we have uh, stuff like uh, banana fiber water hyacinth bamboo fiber a lot of uh, you know uh, innovative products have come in that range actually and uh, it's it's great i mean the innovation in that area uh, hap- i mean the, the fact that it's happening is great but uh, taking a step back looking at biodegradable per se okay um so what these so my problem is that these these pads the sanitary napkin uh, companies the biodegradable range companies they do not de- disclose biodegradable under what condition so in biodegraded uh, degradability there are couple of you know different uh, uh, things like uh, is it is it biodegradable at home uh in in your compost bin is it biodegradable under the sun i mean if you just leave it out in the open will it just you know vanish is it biodegradable under factory conditions right so um term biodegradable is there is an issue there so unless we actually are able to pinpoint that uh, you know how biodegradable are these pads uh, i mean a c- c- couple of people have actually composted them and the results have not been very encouraging 
so to say uh, they have not uh, completely biodegraded the same thing applies to this range of biodegradable plastic biodegradable you know toothbrushes where there are you know clauses which are not uh, you know divulged uh, to the consumer and so there may, uh, there may come, up, come up with you know some better uh, options as well yeah i mean if you if you go to a shop and you have an option of a biodegradable pad versus a, a you know a regular sanitary napkin i would i mean definitely we would want to go towards uh, the biodegradable pad right but uh, yeah i mean again you know it's a easy uh, uh, the ultimate it's a use and throw product also so if you look at the life cycle of uh, the whole uh, you know uh, pad uh, using i mean uh, given all the uh, you know resources that has gone into the pad and finally the product uh, i mean i'm i'm i don't think it justifies the 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 ecological you know investment in that product quite justifies it being used for a few hours and just being thrown away mm-hmm. right. so do we have any other uh, uh, as kamana said about the reusable uh, cotton pads do we have other mm-hmm. you know any more range of um, sustainable options uh, towards menstruation yeah so uh, i would i'm very very fond of uh, talking about this uh, you know the sustainable menstruation option that is this is the uh, cup so this is how a cup looks like and uh, in kamna's video you'd have seen the uh, you know the whole structure of the uterus so this is how the cup goes in and it holds the blood it is made up of silicon it is uh it is the uh, you know medical grade silicon it means it you uh, this product is used in catheters and breast implants so it's very safe to use safe yes to uh, i mean I love... sorry it's safe to be inside your body as well yes yes so i mean see plastic per se is not uh, always the evil uh, one you know plastic was invented to solve real world issues of resources getting depleted so the reusability of plastic reusability of, of a product like this i think makes a huge difference i mean you uh, 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 going by again you know what kamna talked about the the math around how many uh, uh, points being uh, sorry how many pads being saved so i mean if you if you just calculate uh, you know 10 pads per month uh, maybe 20 pads a year um so in a uh, sorry 120 pads a year so and if you can equate it to the plastic saved i mean in 10 years so a, a average lifespan of a cup is 10 years so in 10 years you would have saved some 60000 plastic bags it is equivalent to saving something like that you know it's like really insane and uh, why uh, i really like the cup is because the convenience i mean we are so much driven by convenience now and uh, if you talk about convenience and you talk about the sanitary pad the regular sanitary pad and if i to talk about the cup uh, it is i mean it is it is so simple i mean i i'm i'm an avid traveler i travel all the time and during my travel i do not have to worry about my sanitary pads being mm-hmm. replenished the stock right. being replenished i do not have to worry about how am i going to dispose a pad i do not have to worry about how uh, you know and where am i going to change so you just need a small uh, you know uh, washroom to just go and when you, when you insert and so first time when you buy a cup you have to sterilize it but uh, thereafter whenever you're using it it is just reinsert and uh you know uh, take it out rinse and just put it back so simple and like do you have there are different uh, sizes in menstrual cups as well so when it comes to choose the right size for you uh, how you go for it so uh, see the i have here three types of cup okay if you see this one does not have a uh, the the base is a flat base okay mm-hmm. now this is this is a she cup which has a small uh, stem to it right and there is another cup which is a longer stem so more or less the cups that you find in the uh, country are uh, you know one of these okay and uh, how you go about choosing i would say uh, it depends on uh, uh, you know someone who is who has conceived and delivered a child would have different cervix size so so uh, 
ideally uh, they ask you to check the cervix size before ordering a cup the instructions are very you know in detailed provide but i think a safe option for uh, you know a woman who is probably sexually active or uh, you know they can can go for a medium sized uh, or a you know cup, cup like this so typically you know the cup size is also about this stock uh, this stem okay so uh, one hint i would want to like one tip i would want to give is that um so the 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 uh, you know uh, one of the biggest you know issues with the cup is the inserting and the taking it out so a lot of women are just petrified like when i bought my cup uh, two years ago sorry i was going to come to the point that how how was your experience when you used it for the first time uh, and how yeah. uh, once you got used to it are you satisfied using this particular product yeah yeah so uh, you know th there is so much of uh, it all connects back to the social conditioning that we have around menstruation right um so the when i bought my cup for the first time it was not so much about the waste element to it but about uh, you know uh, the fact that i wanted to give it a try it is a sustainable uh, you know being mindful about every aspect that uh, you know every aspect of your life uh, every every practice so i just wanted to make a switch and see how i can send less less to landfills now i it took me i think 2 3 months before i could muster the courage of even with all my you know thing for waste and all with all my commitment towards uh, keeping it things off landfills it took me so much time to actually muster the courage of trying the cup but once uh, so how how i would want to incentivize somebody uh, to, to do this is once you try it out the uh, the you know the advantages the benefits are immense i mean of course the first advantage the first obvious uh, is the you know the the uh, your ecological imprint which which just you know goes down the second thing again you know i i i'd like to bring back the topic of convenience uh, uh so never have i ever uh, you know thought that i can do so many things during my periods like i can go for a run i can get into the swimming pool i can go for workouts i can dance i can do anything so that conditioning that you have around uh, periods uh, that you know uh, we, that that bars us from even thinking that our bodies could be so unique to respond differently to uh, menstruation so i would have lived my whole life not knowing that i can i'm capable of doing these things and even things like that my blood does not stink you know so that acceptance that i felt after uh, using the cup is something that is that just uh, wonderful okay also uh, so a lot of people have this stigma attached to menstrual cup i i was seeing a question that has come about saying that um, does uh, using cup affect fertility uh i think uh, we have reached a stage when we should not be even talking about person virginity anymore you know uh see cycling dancing horse riding there are so many things do we say that okay do not cycle you will lose your virginity do not uh, you know uh, go for a uh, you know dance you lose your virginity so any extreme physical activity uh, you know sports uh, may as well uh, Uh, you know uh, result in a loss of the hymen right um so far but, but yes i mean since uh, it's it's uh, the whole cup is very much you know dependent on how you the mental conditioning that you have even towards something that goes inside in from a, in a very you know personal private area uh, for for children for uh, young young girls who have uh, you know just uh, started her periods maybe this product called the period panty wow so this is like uh, so this is a regular panty okay now inside we have uh, a pad attached to it okay and this is again washable and reusable yeah absolutely so whatever kamna told about reusable pads everything is applicable for this wash it with cold water and the blood stains will go off uh, 
Yeah, and one thing about the cups that I forgot to mention is that uh, wash it with every time, uh, you know, while disinfecting it, which is another people think that it has to be disinfected every time with by sterilizing, uh, like the uh, like the nipple, like a feeding bottle nip nipple. That is actually not true. Uh, the first time you buy a cup, you have to sterilize it properly by boiling it. After that, thereafter, you just have to, uh, you know. Uh, rinse it properly every time you're reinserting before reinserting you just have to give it a proper rinse with soap soapy water or bioenzymes whosoever is using bioenzyme can just use it with that so can we have time for like a couple of questions uh, just sure. a couple of questions so um, the viewers can type in the questions if they have any questions and while they type in the question let me just finish the bit of trivia that i was talking about so uh, 355 menstruating women in india all of which 12 use sanitary pads so that's about 7 million sanitary pads in our landfill or getting incinerated. So the question was, if everyone, okay, all 355 million women start using the sanitary pads that's usually available in the market, uh, what is the size of the landfill that is required? So that's usually, uh, so I'll give you an example of two cities. So uh, like a city of Silibri and a city of, uh, let's say, Pune. Yeah. So you have a city of Silbury as 220 million uh, square meters and Pune is around 330 uh, million square meters. How many Siliburis and how many Punes do you need to take care of or uh, if that all the sanitary waste is spread? So guys, you can type in your answers as to how many Siliburis, how many Punes do you need to, and if all of that sanitary waste is kind of spread on the ground. So you can start typing the answers. I'll give you the answer uh, a little later. So till then, we can have Nidarshana answer the questions. Yeah, also, to... thank you so much. This question is not directed at me. I'm so bad with math. I was just looking for my calculator, you know, <laughs> thinking, why is he giving me this complex question, <laughs> math question? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, uh, Ankita. So we are, we are the uh, no, I cannot hear. Can you can you repeat? Yeah, put the cup shift while uh, inside the body and cause spills and things. Okay, the cup does it shift inside the body when you are doing your activities? And do you have you know does does it spill or anything? That's the question is about. Okay, so the this cup, if you see, it will stay inside your body. So you insert it. There are different folds. Okay, this is the fold I find most comfortable. Okay, this is a very simple C fold as you call it. It stays inside your body. The vaginal muscles will kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, com uh, the vaginal muscles are very compact. They will hold it like a vacuum. You know, it creates a vacuum. And uh, so... It stays inside, and uh, for uh, yes, I mean when the cup is full, there are small holes here. It is not like complete uh, vacuum, so there are small holes. So when the cup is full, it begins to pour out. So you just have to remove and reinsert. Does that answer the question? I mean, how frequently? Uh, how frequently it needs to be changed? Like the cup okay. is more than new one. It entirely depends on your, uh, you know, on your period, uh, on your periods. From body to body, it will it will differ. But uh, I think on an average, say six to seven hours is uh, what I would say that you need to reinsert the, you know, take it out and reinsert. But still, using a menstrual cup is a it seems like a promising idea for the solution for the current situation of. Uh, sanitary pads and the, all the pollution that comes along we are facing. But to convince this as a new idea to school going girls or working women, uh, how that will be possible? How, how What would be the best way to uh, convince them and what would you would like to say, you know, as a end uh, note for the audience? Okay, so uh, see, firstly, um, why would anybody want to use a cup? Somebody who is probably not very invested in the environmental uh, you know, narrative, somebody who would want to, who would look for a personal, very personal, you know, individual experience. 
for that for those kind of people i think uh, the fact that it is so convenient it is so uh, you know it is so uh, the cost saving is is a factor the convenience is a factor sorry it's a one time investment sort of yeah it is a one time investment and this will last you for 10 years so imagine i mean you you do not have to worry about another you know uh, uh, a frequent buy for about 10 years that that is like huge right so uh, then thirdly i think the fact that a lot of women who use the cup talk about it as use the term liberating when you talk about that right uh, so i think the very very important factor is the how you even at my age i mean i'm almost turning 40 40 and after so many years of menstruating i suddenly realized i how it feels to be not menstruating almost you know that 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 difference i mean you you don't realize you're menstru- you, you were having your menses and that feeling is i think very very liberating is what i would no, say i felt so powerful that they are inspiring right now a lot of our audience to go for it i'm pretty sure and also i think uh, because uh, we got like a one hour session so it before instagram kind of knocks us off um i think uh, we'd like to thank you nidarshana for joining us and uh, thank you so uh, much thank you can uh, posting questions to us or they can send us messages and we will reply to that right so uh, thank sure. you nidarshana and continue to inspire us continue to inspire us how many ways you can thank you so <laughs> much and, okay bye bye but and so before we end uh, so that uh, the regarding the trivia right the question so we have like if everyone uses in india a uh, sanitary napkin that is available in the market so that accounts to what to see a billion uh, sanitary pads so the answer is if you spread it and you manage it in the landfill you would need about 8700 pune and you would need close to about 11000 cd gurus oh that's a big number <laughs> so that's where we are heading at so uh, thank you all for joining the session thank you and so much. uh Thank you, Ankita, for sharing your insights. Thank you, Kamla. Thank you, Nidarshana. And I think to end it all, uh, what we'd like to say is this is about freedom of choice. So this is about bringing options to people and uh, letting them have the freedom of choice. Right. So um, thank you once again for joining the live session. And uh, take care, be safe, and uh, hope to see you guys after the lockdown in Delhi. Bye bye.